So I'm Sarah, I'm an engineer at Heroku. I have been on the team about three years and work fully remote out of Dayton, Ohio. And contrary to this graphic that I couldn't help but put in here, I'm not an actual chef and I'm not really an accessibility expert either. I don't have a ton of certifications. I don't have all the WCAG standards memorized. Um, none of that. What I am is an engineer who's trying to work smarter, uh, not harder. So I also want though the features that I'm developing to be usable because really accessibility is usability. And we actually need those things to be usable because everyone is a customer and we want all of our customers to be able to work with our products so we can keep our jobs. For this talk, I'm going to show you how to set up a few tools to help make your code more accessible throughout your development process. So you can be set up for success on every commit, but really without giving you a lot more to think about in that workflow, like all the WCAG standards. Here are the first three things I wanna talk about. You're probably already familiar with Ember template lint, but we're already also going to talk about Husky and lint staged. And I'm going to show you how to use all three of those together to really um, crank up the power of Ember template lint. So Husky is a tool to simplify running Git hooks and it will operate at different stages throughout your workflow, like before or after a commit, um, before a rebase. Lots of other options are out there, but we're just gonna talk about pre-commit. And with just these few setup steps, we can have it automatically lint our code before every single commit. It can also do a lot of other things because you can just give it any sort of script to run and it'll go off and do that. Um, one thing to note is that it does not play nice with VS code for some reason, so we are running in the terminal. And then there's lint staged, which I did not pick these emoji, by the way, they actually use these. Um, so we've got Husky set up to do a pre-commit lint, but um, that's gonna check our entire project and it's gonna take a long time and we're not really into that. We're trying to work faster. So lint staged actually allows you to target only those files that have changed and run those checks on them. Again, the setup is really simple. We're just gonna add the package as a dev dependency and then tell Husky to run lint staged as our pre-commit hook. And then we are going to tell lint staged what um, things we want to run. And that's where Ember template lint comes in. So we're gonna ups update that configuration to run it. And then our other code quality tools like Prettier or ESLint and next time we add a commit, all the files that we have staged will be linted by Husky and check for accessibility issues by Ember template lint. Um, so I'm gonna magnify this a little bit so you can see it better. And a cool thing it does is if there's no files that were staged which match the specific lint check, it'll just skip those right off the bat. And then if there are errors, that code will not be committed and it'll actually give you more details about, what, about the error that's happening so you can go and address the issue. So that's it really. Now we're automatically checking all of our code commits um, for accessibility issues without having really, once you get this set up, you're not changing your day-to-day -day workflow really at all. And because that entire workflow can be committed to version control, everybody who is using your project has the benefit of that. And you can be testing every single change on your code. So this creates a really great feedback loop where new and old issues can be identified uh, really quickly and incrementally. But if you're editing code that's part of a larger component, like a button, um, you'll also wanna test the rendered component for accessibility issues because um, just linting stage files is probably not gonna tell you that. And I know, at least on our site, we've got a ton of, I literally picked one random page. Here's like four or five buttons, they're everywhere. So you want to make sure you're testing these things. And that's where Ember A11Y testing comes in. Sometimes I'll say Ember Ally testing. I apologize if either one of these is not right. 
Um, and it is actually a wrapper around the AxCore testing engine, which has all those accessibility rules that we do not want to be memorizing. So that's why we want to be uh, adding that in. And after a quick install, you can actually set up Ember A11Y testing using either a single config file or can add, be added to individual tests, like in this example here. Um, and by adding it to those rendering checks, um, you can ensure that the changes that you're making aren't affecting your other UI states. And then it will flag any accessibility issues in your tests and give you the specific error and actually a little bit more information um, with a link out to another resource to help fix it. As my little side bonus tip, uh, if you haven't used an AI coding assistant by now, maybe check it out because it will actually give you information um, in your IDE. You can say, what accessibility issues do I have with this page? And it actually give out some um, actionable insights. They're not always 100, so you gotta check that stuff. But um, it can be really helpful to get that information without leaving your IDE. You can ask, actually ask it to solve issues for you as well. In this example, I just highlighted a random uh, paragraph tag and said, what's the correct syntax? Oh, that was the last example, sorry. So this one is me just randomly asking, what's the correct syntax for a skip nav link? And it actually um, gave me a little bit of information, threw out some example code, and was actually pretty helpful. But okay, back to our workflow where we're talking about these different tools. Um, when you're adding tools like that, you have them in an existing project. And if you haven't run them before, you're probably gonna come up with maybe a lot of issues if you haven't been checking those things already. Um, so I think it's also important to have some escape hatches in your workflow because if something is failing and you know you're not gonna be able to fix it in that moment, you don't wanna be blocking on forward movement. That can get really frustrating. And all these tools that I have shown you so far do have those kind of escape hatches. So you don't have to worry about setting them up and feeling like it's some overwhelming task to fix everything that's being identified as an issue right off the bat. You can fix them just a little bit out of, at a time. So Ember template lint has a flag for update to do. Well, it'll actually convert your errors to do so you can come back and check them out later. Husky has a no verify flag where you can just kind of skip it all together if you need to. And then Ember A11Y testing does allow you to turn on and off certain rules so you can tackle them one or just a few at a time. I love this graphic. Um, so, so far we've talked about several ways to identify accessibility issues in your code, but it would be an absolute crime for me to not also kind of reiterate what was said earlier of just like, let's use semantic HTML and make a button a button. Um, and here's just a small example of where that makes a big difference. A button has a lot of different conformance checks um, and needs to be able to receive Keyboard focus, you need to be able to activate it on enter or space. It's got to have an accessible name, all these things. And then on mobile device, it's got to activate on double tap. And then on other devices, it's got to do all this other stuff. I don't really want to keep track about of that in my brain. So um, if we have to go through and take a div and like zhuzh it into button behavior, there's a lot of work that's involved there, you've got to add like tab index equals zero and some event listeners for the activations and ARIA things you have to figure out. I don't want to do that. Um, and so if you just make the button the button, we'll get a lot of all that stuff for free. So that's my, that's my aside. And anytime you start to write a div in your code, that should kind of be a red flag moment to stop and ask yourself, like, is there an element here that I could be using instead, which would be more meaningful? And here's the example where the paragraph tag, I said, is this appropriate HTML element to use here? You can see 
maybe I like misspelled something in the prompt. It didn't care. The AI went for it anyway and gave me an actual suggestion that I could um, use without even leaving my editor. So to wrap up, I feel like you can really implement small changes like these without complicating your workflow or using up a lot of additional mental capacity in your day uh, with the working when the linting workflow, you're only prompted to update the files that you've already touched and whatever you're working on. And with the Ember A11Y workflow, those ax rules are global, but you can turn them on and off individually and address them when you're ready. So if you're not doing some sort of accessibility checks like this, I'd encourage you to really consider setting up these few tools to help you get there. There's really not a lot of work involved, so you could do this in maybe an afternoon, but get years and years of benefit from it. And before I wrap up, I wanted to say that uh, my colleague Ryan and I are working the Heroku table, but our swag master got stuck in Dallas. So I'm going to go after this talk and pick up stickers that I had printed. Thank you, New York City. Um, so if you all want to stop by the Heroku um, table before you leave, uh, hopefully we'll have some great stickers for you and would love to chat. Thanks.